Yes. We are now inside the 16th chapel in the Vatican. Inside, the walls are painted with many beautiful frescoes made by artists during the High Renaissance period. Yes. The chapels have always held great importance to Catholicism. Yes. Mainly due to the fact that it's a central place in Christendom as a private chapel of the Pope on the side of the papal enclave, where the College of Cardinals gathers to elect new popes. We are now looking at this beautiful art piece, The Disputation of the Holy Sacrament by Raphael Sanzio. This painting was made between 1509 and 1510 and is one of the first paintings that was made in the Vatican. Raphael used geometry in this artwork and incorporated that circle and square through the use of linear perspective to create this beautiful fresco. When creating this piece, Raphael incorporated the painting into three sections, which are the upper, middle, and lower levels. The upper level Raphael reflects the perfect golden circle of heaven. As you can see, the golden rays that are above God reflects the beauty of heaven. The middle level section, Christ is surrounded by Virgin Mary and John the Baptist. And using geometric and pictorial needs, Raphael established his painting mediating between heaven and earth, which also reflects the perfect golden circle of heaven. And finally, the lower level, Raphael depicts the definitive church on the earth. Around the altar are Saints Jerome, Gregory, Ambrose, and Augustine, which were the four doctors of the Latin church. Through their writings and teachings spread the holy word. Raphael understood the importance of linear perspective and applied it in his painting. Locating the center of the arc, Raphael determined the horizon line of his composition. There he fixed the vanishing point and his perspective construction. The differentiation between the upper and lower zones between heaven and earth became the governing principle of his design. This next painting by Michelangelo is of Adam and God, located at the top of the Sistine Chapel at 500. This painting visually tells the story of God giving life to mankind out of dust, which is what Adam named means. Michelangelo's vast interest in the human body and its anatomical positions is well defined in his artwork. He brings his paintings to life as he draws in full detail every muscle and every curve in the body. When it comes to the painting of Adam and God, he beautifully portrays how perfect the human body is by their body language and sense of motion. What does this painting mean? Does it have any symbolic references behind it? Many people believe that the cape around God is the shape of the human brain, and the green cape dangling in the air is supposed to be the brainstem, which could mean that God is bestowing intellect on Adam, and the section where God's hand is reaching to Adam, some believe that that represents the synapses, which is the part of the neurons that transmit chemical electrical signals. Others also believe that it also represents the uterus, and the green cape that is the umbilical cord, representing the physical birth of Adam. The way Michelangelo is depicting Adam is that even though God already breathed life into him, his body language depicts a sense of lethargy without a spark of emotion as though his mind is not yet fully engaged. While God on the other end is fully engaged and showing power and purpose with his angels full of energy and full of life. I believe that Michelangelo is trying to depict this moment in time, God giving Adam a sense of passion, the ability to feel life to its fullness, because with deep capacity of emotion is a sole purpose that man is moved to accomplish greatness. Michelangelo also plays a Neoplatonic thought when he represents mankind in an ideal form, because as you can see, no human being has the kind of muscle structure, or at least I don't think it's possible. <laughs> in, the book of in the book Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel, Graham Dixon asks an important question, yet I found myself wondering, why did Michelangelo have God create Adam with a finger? He goes and mentions that it is a symbolic reference to the education of Adam because God uses his finger in certain traditions of theology. For example, how he writes his finger in the Ten Commandments for Moses. He also goes on to mention that the finger is the conduit through which God's intelligence, his ideas, and his morality seep into man.